I nourished you when you were a baby and I looked after you in care as you grew up until you became an adolescent. You lived upon what I worked for and strived and sacrificed in my body and time and wealth so that you may live healthy. Whenever a night passed you, when you were sick or ill or coughed, I was the first to be up, carrying you and looking upon you with my heart, afraid if an atom or a little breeze would harm you in any way. I could not sleep while you seeing you sick until you slept and then I slept. Who has the most right for my ultimate companionship and goodness? Your mother, your mother, your mother, and then your father. If you behave rudely, harshly, incorrectly towards your parents, stubborn, arrogant, rude, foul mouth towards them don't be surprised tomorrow that when your kids grow up and they behave exactly like that towards you then that time you're going to sit and reflect you know damn hell that's exactly the same way i used to speak to my father i don't even need to stand here and tell you from quran and sunnah because the fact is they're your parents, regardless of what Allah has said, regardless of what Rasulullah said, you must love them. There is no excuse. Why should somebody have to tell you that Allah has commanded you to love your parents? What are you so stupid that you can't even see that these people are to be respected? You only came to dunya because of these people. And what have you forgotten? The times when you were young and you were children, every time that they picked you up when you cried, every time they fed you when you were hungry, every time when you would excrete, that do we have to remind you that Allah has said something about this? That you and I don't have enough common sense to remember that these people should be loved. And some brothers and sisters can't even make dua for their parents. We have that luxury, dear brothers and sisters. Hold on to your parents for as long as you can because one day you will be burying them and on that day you will regret. My parents are not Muslim. My wife is in the audience. And she... she knows how much I love my parents. My parents love me. Every day, my dad says to me, he loves me. Many of us don't even have this as Muslims. But if my dad dies like this, where is he going to go? You could pray for your parents. I can't pray for my dad when he dies. <laughs> this is the reality, brothers and sisters. <laughs> this is the reality. Don't underestimate the blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Don't make it too late, brothers and sisters. Don't make it too late. And today I wanted to talk about the person that I met, the person that I knew that inspired me more than any other human being ever has. I have a person that was not a sheikh, that was not a scholar. In fact, if you were to ask this person what madhab she followed, if you were to ask this person about some of the terms that we see floating around on Facebook today, she would not even know what they were. 
She's the most inspirational human being that I've ever met. And it's my mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on her. Because many times we look for role models, we look for heroes, and we try to find them in books or we try to find them, you know, as great scholars that live halfway across the world that we would never meet, but we neglect the role models and the heroes that are in our homes. How many of us would not even be here if our parents did not teach us La ilaha illallah? Yes, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides people to Islam. But at the same time, how many of us are here because our parents cared enough about us to teach us the meaning of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? And that's what we want to focus upon tonight is that kindness that needs to return back to one's parents that many of us have forgotten. There's one business thriving at the moment and that's the old age pensioners' homes. It's big business. Paying to have your parents just put away from you. Sounds strange, but you know, many of us Muslims are following exactly the same methodology of thought. So, you know, I'm not very startled at times to find that people with short thobes and flowing beards and faces covered, that sometimes you find vile, vulgar, repulsive language coming out of their mouths and even cursing and swearing towards their parents. It's not surprising, but you know, a damn good teacher and a damn good parent will always make sure there's a gap between you and them. Sometimes in our own lives, there's many things that our parents said, certain things that now, years later, you think, you know, that's exactly what my father said to me. And I was too arrogant and too rude to accept it at that stage. And he said to me, one day you're going to accept it. And that's exactly what happens. What goes around, comes around. Three supplications are answered without any doubt in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari. A father who prays for his son, a traveler who prays whilst on a journey, and an oppressed individual. These prayers are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine if your father is angry with you, there are some fathers who may not pray for you. They may be cursing you. They may be cursing you. They may be reviling you. And that dua unfortunately may be traveling back up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a young man who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to him, Ya Rasulallah, my father takes my money. He always asks me for money. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, well, call your father. He went to call his father. Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that time. And he said to him, Rasulallah, when the father comes to you, ask him, what were you saying in secret on your way here? Father was muttering something which his son couldn't hear. He said, ask him what he was saying. When the father approached the Rasul Sallallahu asked him, is it true what your son is saying? The father said, Ya Rasulullah, if he only knew what I'm using his money for anyway, I'm using it to look after his poor auntie. She is left without anybody. Where else am I putting it only in places where I have to, using it towards his family? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, look, I want to ask you a question. Tell me about what you were saying in secret when you were coming towards me here. The father looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and said, I made some verses of poetry. Rasul Sallallahu said, please say them to me. And he said, O oh son, I nourished you when you were a baby. And I looked after you in care as you grew up until you became an adolescent. You lived upon what I worked for and strived and sacrificed in my body and time and wealth so that you may live healthy. Whenever a night passed you, when you were sick or ill or coughed, I was the first to be up, carrying you and looking upon you with my heart, afraid if an atom or a little breeze would harm you in any way. I could not sleep while you seeing you sick until you slept and then I slept. He said, when I ceased to see you sick, it was as if I was the one who was sick and ill. And so my eyes would always overwhelm with tears, but you never knew. And then he said, and when you finally reached the adulthood, 
which all my life I was anticipating and looking forward to seeing you become that. I mean, this is all he's doing, right? He's raising him, waiting for the day he's going to get married. The day when he will get his qualifications and finish. The day when he will get his skill. The day when he can stand on his feet. The day when he will rejoice. Until you reach the day when I have all my life anticipated in my heart to see you reach and rejoice. You gave me a reward. And your reward was harshness. And frowniness. And mistreatment. As if I am the one who owes you. And you owe me nothing. The way you treated me is like what a neighbor would treat his neighbor. I wish that you even gave me that. Al Rasul Sallam, he looked up at the father, and the father looked at him, and the Prophet's beard was soaked with tears. From his emotion, Al Rasul Sallam grabbed the boy from his chest. He shook him and said to him, You and everything you own belongs to your father. This uh, hadith is narrated in Ibn Majah. Today we see children taking their own parents to court because they took their house or their property. Allahu Akbar. وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما. That if one of them or both of them reaches very old age with you. Then don't utter the sound, don't say the word uff to them. Don't utter that sound of displeasure towards them. Don't say anything bad or abrupt or offensive towards them. It's a sound, it's not like even a proper word, it's a sound. And don't be abrupt, don't be rude with them. And say something very nice and respectful and noble to them. That first of all, don't disrespect them. If you notice here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the bare minimum. Don't cross this line. He told us be excellent towards your parents, but He's showing us where the line is. Don't cross this line. Don't say oof to them. Don't be abrupt to them. Don't be rude with them. And if there's nothing else that you can do for them, there's nothing you have to offer to them. There's absolutely nothing you have to provide to them, to take care of them, to be good to them. Then at the very least, just try to say something nice to them. Just try to say something nice to them. وَاغْفِرْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower the wings of mercy for them. Be merciful, be compassionate, be affectionate towards them. No matter what we do, we can never fully repay our parents, dear brothers and sisters. Not even for one moment of pain that she felt while you were in her stomach. You can never repay her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us to make dua for our parents. Oh Allah, have mercy on them the same way they had mercy on me when I was little. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this very verse is proving to us that we can't repay our parents because we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on our parents the way they had mercy on us. Now, O oh Allah, allow me to have mercy on my parents the way they had mercy on me. But only you, O oh Allah, can have mercy on my parents. Only you, Allah, can show them, treat them the way they, they deserve to be treated. Because there is nothing I can do but make dua. So how do we talk to our parents? No, but we have this arrogance. How much have you and I served those very parents? Ask yourself, how many times that phone will ring and you'll see it clearly. It says dad or mom on it. And you just put it on silent and put it back in your pocket like you didn't even see it. How many times have you felt embarrassed to walk with them? Because you know somebody on the other side that's going to look at you and think, Oh my God, is that your dad? Or, oh my God, is that your mom? I ask you how many times have you not carried the shopping bags but walked behind your dad or your mom with a bop and let them carry that bag? How many times when you came home late at night or when you were listening to your parents and they told you clearly that son, don't do this. Or oh, my beloved daughter, don't do this. Did you go behind their back and do it? How many times did you have an altercation with your parents? 
and they told you off and you shrugged your shoulders and you walked off and you slammed the door thinking you were something big forgetting that you were transgressing in the sight of Allah how many times have we done this and how many times will we continue to do it forgetting that Allah has commanded that it is haram for you and I to do such a thing and I ask you how many times in your life have you disrespected your mother? And you know what? People give me excuses. You know what? She oppresses us. Oh, she doesn't understand. Oh, she doesn't know. When did you ever become such a brain box? And when did you become so intelligent that you knew more than your parents? By Allah, these people have lived 20 or 30 more years than you. And you're telling me you're 10 or 15 or 20 and you know more? You're a child in a nappy no matter how old you are because you're the love of your parents. And how dare we do such? I ask you, is it worth it? Wallahi, have a dream. Have a dream that you want to achieve. But make sure that you do the khidmah of your parents. Make sure that you serve your parents. By only serving them, you'll be able to attain that dream. I swear by Allah, that is the only way you'll be able to attain it. There is no other way. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost his mother when he was six years old. Fifty years later, fifty plus years later, the Prophet Sallallahu mother died on the journey from Medina to Mecca at a place called Al Abwa. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was traveling from Medina back to Mecca, Everybody that was traveling with him, the whole caravan, the whole army, he said, stop here. And a few people that were close with the Prophet ﷺ, they went with him. And he went and he sat down at a grave. And he sat down there for a little while. After a while, he started to cry. He started to sob. He cried so severely that literally he was sobbing. His whole body was shaking. The Sahaba that were there, you know when you see somebody that you love in pain, it causes you pain. They didn't even understand, they didn't know what this was about. But some of the other Sahaba started to cry, but I see the Prophet some crying so badly. Umar radiallahu anhu finally went and he hugged the Prophet some from behind. He grabbed him. And he said, it's okay, it's okay. He consoled the Prophet some Until the Prophet some was able to contain himself. And then they asked, what makes you cry like this, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, this is the grave of my mother. And coming here and visiting here reminds me of my mother. And I miss my mom and that's why I cry. He was six years old. How much time had he spent with his mother? 50 years later. He's a grandfather at this point. He's the messenger of Allah at this point. But he misses his mom and he cries for his mother. And so that's the importance. So before you complain about your parents, before you, you know, are ungrateful about your parents, realize what a blessing parents are and go and ask someone who doesn't have their parents what they would trade to be able to spend another moment with their parents. Why is this emphasis so much about parents? You know, I'll tell you why. Because Allah created the parents with an instinctive nature. They can't help it to love their children. They will put their lives at stake for their children. They will sacrifice everything they have for their children. Even when they're angry at their children and they ground them or punish them, it is only because of their intense love for them because they don't want them to fall. Especially the mother. Especially the mother. Especially the mother. And then the father. The mother and the father will give everything they have for their children. Your mother carried you for nine whole months and you kept getting bigger and bigger. It didn't get easier, right? The bigger you became, the heavier you became and the more back pains and uh, kidney pains and then it comes with side effects, cholesterol and diabetes and the body changes and then she's never the same as before. It's all your fault. And we forget this. Yet even upon that, Allah gave her the strength. Now to go back to that surah number 17 that we were talking about, that famous ayah about not even saying oof to your parents. 
What's very interesting, what's very profound when you think about it is, notice, pay attention to the language of the ayah. When they become very, very old. It's talking about old, senior, senile parents. It's not talking about functioning, intelligent, working, lucid parents. It's talking about when your parents are very old and senile, senility. When the body starts to give out and they can't carry themselves, they can't lift themselves, they can't walk on their own, they can't use the restroom on their own. I mean, this is stuff y'all haven't even thought about, most of y'all. They literally become like children, except it's a lot more difficult now because they're not children. But they emotionally are no different than children. Tantrums and upset and angry and needy and demanding. The mind's given out. Emotionally, they're children. Physically, they're falling apart. This is the situation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking. Now put those pieces together and understand Allah is saying, even in this situation, don't you dare ever lose your cool with your parents. Don't you dare ever be respectful with your parents. You know, there's this young, intelligent, older guy, an adult basically, and he's got a very old, senior, elderly father. So the father asks him, he goes, son, what time is it? So the son goes, dad, it's nine o'clock. A little while later, literally 30 seconds, 60 seconds later, son, what time is it? It's 9.01. 30 seconds, 60 seconds later, son, what time is it? Like, seriously, bro? Like, are you kidding me? What, do you, what time do you think it is? It's 9.02. Like, how many times are you going to ask me the same question? I'm busy over here. I'm trying to take care of something. I'm tweeting. You messed up my hashtag. Like, seriously, guy, come on. And the father tells the son, he goes, I knew exactly what time it was. I was just seeing how long it would take, how many times I could ask you before you lost your cool. Because I remember the time when you were a little kid and you asked me the same question 60 times in 60 minutes. Every minute, every 60 seconds. Daddy, what time is it? Daddy, what time is it? Abu, what time is it? And every single time, I didn't just tell you, I did the whole song and dance. 904, woo! I did that for you. And I asked you three times and you completely lost it. I was just, I was just checking. All right, go back to hashtagging. Because I know no matter what we do, no matter what I do, there is no way we can ever repay our parents for what they have done for us. Everyone else will leave you when times get tough, except for your parents. And ask those who have lost their parents, how much regret they feel once their parents have gone. Even if they did everything they could, still that regret is there. Everyone who has lost a parent or both parents or our beloved reverts whose parents aren't Muslims, who after their parents pass away, they say, we can't even make dua for them. How about them? We will all have to bury our parents or they will, all, they will have to bury us. One of the two will definitely happen. But don't wait till it's too late. We have no idea when we will lose our parents. We have no idea when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them from us. There's no two minute warning that tells us your parents are ready to go. So now take advantage. So now start obeying them. Ask our dear brothers and sisters. Ask the ones who have reverted to Islam, my brother sitting right here, who converted to Islam at the age of 16, and his parents, they drove him out of the house. His regret is, my parents aren't Muslims themselves. And he continues to make dua for them. And he continues to talk to them in the best of manners. Think about these brothers and sisters. And some brothers and sisters can't even make dua for their parents. We have that luxury, dear brothers and sisters. Hold on to your parents for as long as you can because one day you will be burying them and on that day you will regret. My brothers and sisters, I ended with this. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is in Bukhari. Your parents are your heaven or they are your hell. 
by the obedience and dutifulness to your parents, you are obeying and being dutiful to Allah. And through them is your Jannah or Jahannam. I hope that this lesson was a wake up call for all of us. Go, my brothers and sisters, tonight and renew your covenant with Allah. Secondly, renew it with your parents. Go down and kiss their feet. Kiss their feet, literally. And say to them, Mum and Dad, forgive me for any time where I was careless towards you. I want paradise and you are my door towards it. And repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you among the successful. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana. Allahumma ja'al abawayna sababan li dukhulina al-jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to make our parents one of the causes of us entering paradise. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us good parents and to give us an offspring who are righteous and comforting to our eyes. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite this ummah and to return us back to the glory which we once have. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.